time. Have we unlocked the full potential of coffee yet? I used to think that coffee varieties were associated to certain flavors only, like jasmine in a geisha or berries in a katura. But when I met Andres Julio Quiseno, farmer and producer of Finca Milan, we understood that we could push the boundaries further. So last year, we started working together, developing new intentional fermentation that this year achieved unique results, unlocking the full potential of his coffees. After tasting many and many experiments, we finally found the perfect pairing, something that we never had before, and I can't wait to share with all of you today. I'm using two varieties, Geisha and Katura, both coming from Finca Milan, located at 1,700 meters above the sea level on the west side of Colombia, in the Risaralda region. The coffee tree here grows on the west side of Nevado de Ruiz, a volcano whose soil is rich in minerals, giving an amazing complexity to the coffee. The first variety, the green tip geisha, has those classic and elegant floral notes, such as orange blossom today. But we wanted to go a step further, developing the texture using intentional fermentation. So for this specific lot, we chose for an anaerobic lactic process, fermenting the cherries for 96 hours in open tanks, developing the texture making it today syrupy. After that, the cherries are dried on parabolic dryer at 35 degrees for eight days, developing the sweetness and the flavor of papaya. Now, when I tasted the second variety of today, the Katura, I was amazed by its incredible, refreshing fruitiness developed by a new intention of fermentation. So I decided to blend these two coffees together to achieve a balanced yet unconventional experience. What we did with this Katura is truly inspiring. But for now, don't worry about that too much. I will let you know more about it later on. For now, for my espresso, I'm using 18 grams of geisha and 2.5 grams of katura for a total of 20.5 grams in and 39 grams out that I'm brewing at 91 degrees because I wanted to achieve the best potential for both varieties together. The result is going to be, please write that down for me, a medium body with a syrupy texture. and flavors of cantaloupe and watermelon coming from the Katura with orange blossom and papaya from the geisha. And a beautiful lychee in the aftertaste, which is the combination of these two varieties together. The sweetness is medium and candy-like. The acidity is medium and citric. And the bitterness is low to medium. Now, once you serve the espresso, please evaluate visually the crema, but don't drink it just yet and wait for my instructions. As you can see in front of you, you have a very special cup that, with this shape, is going to unlock the full potential of your senses, helping focusing on the tasting experience. So in a couple of seconds, I'm going to ask you to have two sips both of them from the deepest part of the cup, in order to help your nose capturing the whole aromatic compounds. So now, espresso has cooled down 45 seconds. So please take the spoon you have on your right, stir five times, and then you can place it back where you found it. Go ahead and enjoy the espresso.
All right, guys, if you're ready, let's move on. Shall we? All right. Let's go to the second course, the milk beverage. For my milk beverage, I want to decrease the amount of geisha and increase the one of katura in order to unlock the potential of this beautiful variety even more. Unlocking the full potential of katura was a very complicated process. It took five years of thinking and experiments to fully master the fermentation because all the parameters have to be aligned. And this is exactly what happened with this beautiful nano lot. When we pick the cherries and then put them straight away into an eight degrees room, stopping the germination and preparing the cherries for the fermentation process. After that, the cherries are pulped and taken into a sealed bioreactor. But before it's sealed, here the magic happens. Andres inoculates the mosto coming from the previous geisha fermentation and a special natural yeast called Schizo Saccharomyces pombe, a very complicated name for an amazing result in the cup, giving that watermelon quality that you had in your espresso. After the bioreactor is sealed, Oxygen is pushed in and nitrogen correction. Oxygen, uh, oxygen is taken out and nitrogen is applied for 72 hours, developing a texture. It's a very precise recipe. And here, each degree matters. So after tasting many and many experiments with higher temperatures achieving some spiciness, and lower temperature achieving some floral notes. We finally found that 26 degrees was a perfect temperature for the yeast to work efficiently with the coffee, creating that new fresh, fruity profile. For my meal beverage, I'm using 17 grams of katura. And three grams of geisha for a total of 20 grams in, 37 grams out, in order to achieve a kick of intensity. And I'm, I'm going to add 60 ml of a freeze-distilled cow's milk having 5.5% of fat. I, I steam this milk at 50 degrees achieving a serving temperature of 55. The result is going to be, please write that down for me, a creamy texture and flavors of cantaloupe candy, white chocolate, papaya yogurt, and fior di latte ice cream. Now, we talked about the fermentation process, right? But guys, it doesn't stop there. In fact, after the nitro fermentation, the bioreactor is open. Cherries are washed and then dried under the sun for 15 days. Because we wanted the UVA lights to kill the bacteria, stopping the fermentation right where we wanted to achieving a high sweetness. So please enjoy, and please enjoy. Because of the nitro fermentation, roasting this coffee was a true challenge. So we applied the soaking technique because of the density of the coffee beans in order to preserve the fruity, the fruity flavors and balancing the sweetness. Please enjoy. For this special coffee, I also needed a special milk. 
So three years ago, I started working with Simone, a crazy passionate dairy farmer coming from a small village close to Milan. He has 42 Gersney cows, brown and white, and they produce an incredible seasonal meal that will pair perfectly with this coffee today. Please enjoy. Right, hey guys, if you're ready. Let's go to the last course, the signal to drink. So in the cards I'm giving you, you can find all the information about my signal to drink ingredients. Hey judge, this is for you, you can take it backstage. I know it's summer, it's hot, so let's make a refreshing mocktail. Starting with the first ingredient, representing the fermentation. I made a homemade yogurt by mixing 200 ml of the milk coming from Simone and 2 grams of lactobacillus. I let them ferment for 8 hours in order to have a lactic fermentation. After that, I added 2 cl of a fresh passion fruit juice that I made by squeezing 2 passion fruits with 1 liter of boiling water. This to enhance the fruitiness of my coffee, creating a new notes in my signal to drink of peach. And then fermentation is when bacteria consume the sugar within the coffee cherries. So to compensate the sugar loss, I made a homemade tonic water by cooking 10 grams of citric peels like lime and lemon in one liter of boiling water for 10 minutes. After that, I added one gram of saffron and pepper to highlight the freshness. Adding 6 cl will create a new flavor of mandarin. And then, of course, two double espressos, representing 100% of Katura. Then I made with a recipe of 20 grams in and 38 grams out, unlocking the full potential of this amazing variety. This, combined with the other ingredients, will turn that watermelon you had before into a more watermelon candy. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I just shaked all my ingredients with 90 grams of ice, achieving a serving temperature of 12 degrees, because we found that this was a perfect temperature for the ingredients to unlock the full potential of Katura. I'm going to ask you to drink it in two different sips. In the first one, please just enjoy the taste and the tactile. In the second one, you can look for flavor notes. But first, the last ingredient. Timur berry pepper from Nepal. I aged this Timur berry pepper from Nepal for eight days. And after that, I infused it one, uh, for 10 minutes with one liter of boiling water. Now, thanks to this former, it's going to create micro pulses, giving a sparkling citric acidity just in the first sip. I'm going to add this on top of your drink, and you will find, please write that down for me, in the first sip. Sparkling citric acidity with a fizzy mouthfeel, reminding of Orangina, or depending where you're from, Fanta. In the second sip, peach, mandarin, watermelon candy, and raspberry. Please, judges, take two sips, the first one from the phone, the second one just turn in the glass. So as a barista, my role is to unlock the full potential of all coffees. This was just the first experiment, and I can't wait to see how many more we can discover. Thank you very much. Time.